And welcome back to coverage here at the new Capenna Championship. Marshall Sutcliffe with Paul Chion. Thanks so much for coming along. We've got more round three action for you. In our feature, we have Piotr Glagowski. He is facing down Reed Duke. Both of these players, as you can see, are in the Rivals League. And, uh, you know, at the end of this weekend from the Rivals League, the top five who haven't qualified another way are uh, from both Rivals and MPL are going to make it into the World Championship. But uh, that's a long road here for these players. We're still very early in the tournament. We're going to be kicking things off here with game one, just a good old fashioned way between Esper Midrange in the hands of Pyotr Glagowski and Grixis Vampires. This to me is the premier matchup here on day one, Paul. This is the, the one I was most curious about coming in. Yeah, I mean, this is just going to be your classic kind of mid-range slugfest. Last threat standing a lot of the time here. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, play draw is also extremely huge here because, um, you know, both decks play cards that uh, make it much better for you if you're on the play, right? Cards like Kaito Shizuki, um, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, cards like that, it, it's so much, so so advantageous to to kind of be the person putting the pressure on. That's right, and, and you see both players with Kaito Shizuki in their opening hands here, in fact. So that could be a, a big deal. And both players without a third land, although Reed draws a Hagramaling, so... Yeah, so he will hit his land drop. What does he want to do with it is another question. The Luminarch Aspirant on the other side, pretty annoying. Reed does have Infernal Grasp in hand. Yeah, he, so he does have the Infernal Grasp. He By playing the Hogger Mauling, he'll have three mana. That will give him a potential answer here. And looks like he wants to be aggressive here using the Infernal Grasp here. However, if Piotr does find a land now, um, if Piotr finds a land, Reed will not have an answer to Rafine. As it turns out, though, Piotr's just going to have to play Tenacious Underdog and pass... Big bummer here for Pyotr Glagowski. That is not where he wanted to be this turn, especially with Reed finding another land off the top of the library as well. And uh, this one could really get away from Pyotr quickly if he's not able to get back and find a land next turn. Yeah, I think this team on the Grixis Vampires deck has uh, f found the correct strategy to defeat these Esper decks. It's uh, make sure they don't play <laughs> land drop number three here. A time-honored strategy. <laughs> Okay, here's Kaito Shizuki, and after that attack with the Blood Tithe Harvester, it's a draw, straight up draw, and then a duress as well. So Reed can help to at least figure out what's happening next. You can see there's Kaito, Ray of Enfeeblement, Vanishing Verse as the potential targets for duress. There's also Rafine and Denik in hand as well for Piotr, but those, of course, can't be duressed. Yeah, not a lot of great options. I mean, you look at that Vanishing Verse, it doesn't do anything with what mm -hmm. Reed has. However, there are redundant copies of Kaito as well, but I guess you, you're going to need to fight through them at some point. There's a land off the top here for Pyotr, so a little glimmer of hope here. It's also a blue source, so really nice for him. And he's going to get Rafine down, and that will actually allow him to attack and get the Rafine trigger going. Now, he Reed did draw a second power. copy of Blood Tithe Harvester, so he actually does have a way to kill this Rafine as playing the ah. second copy of Blood Tide Harvester will give you blood token number two, and then can, can cleanly give the Rafine minus four, minus four. Oof. You'll be happy to have an answer for that. And you gotta like the cleanup plan here for Duke. His other two creatures are both card advantage creatures with Corpse Appraiser and Bloodthirsty Adversary uh, being great places to put your mana over the next few turns. But right now, job number one is to get rid of Rafine. Kaito was was hidden, but uh, has now returned. So that's also an option on the battlefield as well. Yeah, there's also an infernal grasp in the graveyard, um, so Reed can. Mm. Um, he can do that. Yeah. the The downside to the play is that it does. Uh, mean that he has to only kill the underdog here, right? Right. This allows. Perhaps him to he'd get... like to. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. It looks like he just, yeah, he just wants to get a little more aggressive here. This will also give him another card off of Kaito. Exactly. Ooh. Voltage Surge, and he still has that blood token there. 
Yeah, and, and this is the thing about choosing to play Grixis. You no shortage of ways to kill a Rafine, right? You've got mm -hmm. the Grasp, you got Voltage Surge. I believe uh, most of the members of that team are also playing Ray of Enfeeblement main. So lots of ways to deal with this extremely powerful three mana legend. Boy, Piotr really likes his alternate arts, doesn't he? Yeah. It's, Borders, uh, it's, don't it's need them. Fancy. Yeah. Rafine found the Wandering Emperor. Now, it will be a little more difficult to get this Rafine off the battlefield as it will get an additional point of toughness. Five is very, very key against a yes. lot of the removal effects in the format. We would have to use two, two, per, two mm -hmm. spells basically at this point to get it off. Right. Could be looking at Blood Tithe Harvester activation plus Voltage Surge. Yeah, the, the alternative would be to just ignore it and just try to outrace Piotr, right? Because Piotr is down to 11 at this point, and Reed does True. have two three-power creatures in play. Yeah, Reed will have the luxury of, of quite a bit of information here based on what Piotr does, right? Because right. there's, uh, I think, three unknown cards in hand here. Make it two, and, uh, and Reed will be able to kind of figure it out. Oh, double voltage surge. And Piotr Light on white mana really wanted a second white source to be able to either run out the Wandering Emperor or cast Vanishing Verse. As That's is right. this turn, I mean, this Raven Feeblement, not especially good against the Grixis deck, right? That, that no. was a metagame decision to get ready for all the Esper decks in the field and all the Naya Runes decks. However, in this particular head-to-head, -head, um, you know, it, might be looking to use it as kind life? of a, yeah. yeah, exactly. Fog for a turn from one creature. Right. That's pretty tough. You take your chances when you play, you know, sideboard cards in the main, and sometimes you find the matchup where it doesn't work. And by the way, the line you described last turn, Paul, is exactly what Reed's doing. He's just ignoring Rafine and just racing. He's got Piotr down to five. Tap land off the top with Rafine's tower. That's not going to help. Wow, and this, uh, this is pretty aggressive here. I don't know if he has what it takes here to survive. In fact, he doesn't, Paul. He's going to scoop him up. Reed Duke correctly identifying the line of play. He said, this isn't a time for me to try to control this game to a grinding halt. I am going to apply pressure. I have six power on the battlefield, and I can really hit that life total. And, you know, I'll tell you, it, I don't think you can really criticize Piotr Glugowski's uh, play skill, right? He's considered one of the most skilled players that plays our game. But I'll tell you, if you hand me a mid-range deck <laughs> and you say, pick a player to play it, I'm handing it to Reed Duke. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> this he's... is where he lives. I mean, this yeah, is yeah. when he wakes up in the morning and he's like figuring out what he wants to do for the day, he's thinking like a mid-range player, right? Like yeah. that's how he approaches his whole life, right? Every chance he gets to play Jund, he does in the older formats. And uh, this is a, you know, a distant relative of that deck. Yeah, I mean, the two names that really come to mind for me are Reed Duke and, I guess, Brad Nelson, right? He's also somebody Definitely. who really lives in that mid-range in standard. Um, so, you know, would feel like th this is a great, great tournament for players like them as kind of mid-range was the deck to play coming in. I'm sure that Reed had a lot of input about this deck as well, right? Like, this is, this is the type of deck, especially when you branch out into a third color, you know, we've seen Obzon do this, Jun do this, where you have a lot of wiggle room. Like you can really tune these decks to be a little more towards the assertive end of things. You can control them, it do uh, tune them to be more towards the control end. You have a vast array of sideboard cards to choose from. And that's where experience as a mid-range player and guessing the metagame really, really add up to, to win percentage for these yeah, guys. Absolutely. Game two incoming. Memory that's Deluge. An extremely that, land heavy hand here for Duke. That's a that's an interesting uh, card that I you don't typically see in uh, in the in the mid range decks. Memory Deluge. Oh, Memory Deluge. Yeah. So yeah. it looks like uh, Piotr wants a way to kind of break up these mid range mirrors as well. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Is there Did, an emote coming? What just? Yeah. Don't do that. that. Reed had an all lands with a removal spell opener and then mulligan into all lands with a removal spell. <laughs> yeah, what the so heck? He, 
He's <laughs> he's just hoping that Piotr runs out Rafine. That's that's kind of the hope here. Th that would be step one for him. Step one, but I mean, take a look at what Piotr has here. It's just a lot to fight through. Given that Ree has two mana up, I imagine Piotr is just going to run out a, a wedding announcement here. It just seems like the, the better option against potential removal spells. That's right, and that's and it's also better the earlier you get it down because you can play yeah. Rafine after you've developed your board and still have it have a major impact. Geez, he even has fancy emotes. Like, <laughs> you know, and, and that's what makes also just playing against this Esper deck so difficult. Just the diversity in threat types, right? Oh yeah, you're looking at. You, 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 can, you can have a draw where you just have a bunch of creatures and you curve out and you kill them with Rafine, but then you have to deal with Wedding Announcement that just makes a bunch of tokens and flips into an Anthem effect. Then you have all these Planeswalkers to deal with. It's just so many different angles of attack, and it's really hard to be ready for all, all the different cards. Ray of Enfeeblement, extremely good against Rafine. Not so much against Wedding Announcement. Pretty funny there. Reed actually found Make Disappear off the top of the library. And so Piotr's like, well, hey, if, if winning announcement was good last turn, I'll play it this turn, and somehow this one gets countered, but not the other one. So I, I deduce you just drew that card, Reed Duke. Uh, in the meantime, Ray of Enfeeblement flooded here for Reed. He's got triple All the Ray. All he's drawn are lands, Ray of Enfeeblement, and the one disappear, make disappear. Yeah, and, and you know, I've, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people play up to four copies of this. I'm actually curious if that's actually the correct number. Um, of, just of, Ray of, of Ray of Enfeeblement? Of Ray of Enfeeblement. Just mm -hmm. because it, it's extremely important to kill Rafine. People expect you to bring in the Rays. I've seen a lot of these play, at, at least when I'm playing on the Esper side, I also just take out the Luminarch Aspirant, Aspirants a lot of the time, right? Mm. Because you expect a lot, a lot of these Rays and you kind of are leaning on your expensive cards. So then all of a sudden you have these Ray of Enfeeblements that really only have one fantastic target because i mean think about it if you're killing a 2-2 two -two token from wandering emperor or a 1-1 one -one off of the wedding announcement that's not doing a whole lot so um you know there are just going to be those instances where you're just going to be sitting there with a ray hoping that your opponent runs out of rafine it's really interesting because they have a lot of ways to play around it too like right now ray doesn't even kill rafine right the yeah. wedding announcement has become a wedding festivity and it's pumping up Rafine to five toughness. And, you know, as we mentioned before, you can just wait. Like, if you play Rafine now, it's still super, super powerful. In fact, arguably better, you know, than if you had played it earlier. The one thing changed here, though, for Pyotr. He drew Obscura Interceptor. So it looks like he'd like to sit on that. And, of course, he's fine if Reed's yeah. only game plan here is to fire off one-for-one one removal on his repeatable token effects here. Yeah, I mean, what's telling here is the fact that Piotr Glagowski has Memory of Deluge in the sideboard. He recognizes that this matchup, after sideboard, with all the removal spells, it's going to go for a while, right? So th th this is kind of one of the cards that he has to try and go over the top um, and just okay. really get ahead on cards. So I have a question then. So let's say th this game is just about over, right? Like right. Piotr is way, way, way ahead. But let's say that Reed sees Memory Deluge. He duresses him or, or Piotr casts it, and we go to game three. Is Reed going, should I cut Ray of Enfeeblement? Like, does he just need it as a stopgap for Rafine? Or can he say, all right, all right, you're going to take this much bigger game approach. I'm going to match you with that and, and cut the one-for-one -one stuff and try to go for the more powerful, you know, value engines like we see here. Yeah, um, I, I think how you cyborg also is largely dependent on kind of the play draw type of situation, right? Mm. When you're looking at Reed, you're on the draw. So Ray of Enfeeblement's probably more important to have to not fall behind and get overrun by by a Kaito. However, if you're on the play, you can probably switch things around and um, you know, utilize some other spells just because that that kind of snowball potential off Ravine is is not as likely when you're on the play. Yeah, because I, you know, if I'm Reed, look, this was a specific draw where he he ended up drawing, you know, like three copies of Rave Enfeeblement, but it could make me think in my head, I don't know uh, if I'm approaching this correctly, right? right. Like, if this matchup post board is going to be like the ultimate slog fest, maybe that's not what I want. Wow, obscure interceptor to finish off the game here as Duke felt compelled to cast Meat Hook Massacre, and. Uh, Wow, Tempo Obscura. 
Yeah, and, and uh, is Piotr is playing three copies of the Interceptor here. And, you know, it, th that's one of those cards where um, if, if that was the only instant in your deck, it's fairly easy to play around, right? However, that in conjunction with the Wandering Emperor just oh, makes gross. it impossible, right? It's one of those situations you're like, okay, well, I know you have the Interceptor, probably. Right. So I should maybe <laughs> do something else. But it's like, oh, but if I don't do anything, I'm still you're still just gonna run out of Wandering Emperor and you're just kind of stuck in this situation where it's like, okay, well I guess I guess I just have to let you run out that obscure interceptor. And that just also can uh, prove to just lead to such huge tempo blowouts because now all of a sudden you have this big threat on the battlefield, you slow them down for a turn, and this threat not only helps you in race situations, but also is just a big body to help mow down planeswalkers. Looks like Reed with a quick mulligan here, and this next hand doesn't look much better. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have a removal. I mean, you need to chain two lands in a row here to be reasonably happy. At least one for the Harvester so that you can use the Blood Token. To, to filter. So yeah. I guess, I mean, being on the draw, keep in mind this deck does play 27 lands, right? Okay. And going to five is just an absolute disaster. Right. But Reed's so, on the play on a mold of six on a one lander. Like, Oh, excuse me. Yeah, this could be land? over very quickly. Oh, oh, and it's Hive of the Eye Tyrant off the top. That is a bingo. And here comes Blood Tithe Harvester. That will at least get Reed Duke started. Another land off the top, and he'd just be in business. And Piotr running out that portable hole. No, uh, no. Wow, Blightstep Pathway. There. It's good to be Jeez. Reed Duke. <laughs> he That's can go one way to do it. Keep a one lander and curve beautifully into Fable of the Mirror Breaker, but it is not over. Peter Glugowski has a nice hand here as well. He can run out Rafine. He even has a backup copy of it. Yeah, however, I mean, Reed Duke does have two answers to Rafine here. He does. And, and can... I mean, we're going to see this this token just keep adding treasures to the battlefield. So, I mean, Reed's mana situation is just all but gone at this point. So Reed has to decide between removal spell plus go blank, double go blank, or he could just not. Right. And, he... and it's interesting because you have the answer for this Rafine, right? Right. But what if Pyotr plays another Rafine, do you need to have the second removal spell ready for that? Tough decision here for Reed. Go blank, you know, definitely has the ability to tear apart your opponent's hand. Does feel a little early in the game, right? To be just right. firing off discard twos. Like this is the type of card that can get even better later when there's a bunch of stuff in the graveyard as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think you're going to see Reed discarding two here. Once, oh, he discarded I am, zero. I, am so I take that back. Wow, interesting stuff here from Reed Duke. He likes the go blanks. Yep. Look, after the way the last game went, it's hard to blame him, right? Those are two right. for ones. Those are cards that he wants, not this the one for one stuff. But you know what? You mentioned it, Paul. He did keep Voltage Surge. He he felt, okay, I need to have some way to answer another Rafine. I I just don't have a way to get through that right now. Uh, and the, kind of an awkward situation here for Piotr. He has a portable hole. He's got a Denik in hand, but can't play both the no. hole and the Denik in the You're same right. turn. So if he wants to maximize on his mana, then probably just best to run out this wedding announcement. And it does feel bad to have Reed just continue to make a treasure every single turn. Yes, it does. Especially, uh, he doesn't know how close Reed was to uh, <laughs> not being able to play any spells this game. There's Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Another land off the top here for Duke as well. Yeah, and Piotr has plenty of cards to, to pitch off the first go, go blank, so it's not going to be too backbreaking here. No, not just yet. Now, the second one could hurt, though. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of interesting because the reason that Piotr has so many cards in hand still is because he missed his land drop last turn. But uh, we'll see if he can hit it this time. Kaito Shizuki was the draw step. Again, 
No land here for Pyotr, though. He could yeah. find one with Kaito. Could. Does could he just, just need to, to just Kaito plus and... Yeah, Kaito plus try to find a white's horse, maybe. Right. Um, you're not adding to the board, though. I mean, it, it's... No. It, it feels weird. It's it's pretty tempting to also just maybe get that 2-2 off the battlefield. Although, I, I guess at this point, Regis has so much mana. That doesn't matter. Hmm. But this, this Goblink's going to be pretty strong here. It's going to be able to get the two of those threats. And yeah, Piotr actually choosing to make a ninja here instead. So he's going to think a little bit longer term and try to get some cards going with Kaito next turn. Yeah, and Piotr does have uh, a few blockers in the way now. Yeah, these are going to be two twos. Okay, so this is a good stabilizing okay. effort here for Glagowski. And Reed looks like he's deciding if he'd like to use the Voltage Surge here. Maybe on the the unblockable token. Right. Well, that will clear the way for the Rafine in Piotr's hand. Oh, yeah, it looks like is... he's killing the Kaito. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And another land. Somehow Reed's flooding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep a one lander. Don't miss a land drop. Right. He does have a blood token that he could use to filter away that land. And then assuming he doesn't find anything better, I guess you just go, go blank. Yeah. Oh, this one feels very, very close. Yeah, Piotr just just needs that one turn repri reprieve. Um, if, if Reed does go for the go blank, have to imagine Piotr likely going to keep the Rafine in hand. And mm -hmm. could potentially claw, claw back with it, right? I mean, we're going to see a wedding announcement, turn everything into tutus with the Rafine in play. I know Piotr's light on lands, but Reed doesn't have anything else here. And Reed's actually going to play his land out. He does have Hive of the Eye Tyrant hiding in his mana base back there, too. Yeah, might use a treasure to activate the Hive just because you're going to get that back if you attack with the, the copied version. He is. Look that, at this attack here aggressive. from Duke. Yeah, everybody in. He's actually left Piotr with no graveyard at all thanks to the prior go blank and now the exile effect from Hive. And it all comes through. Nine life now for Glagowski. He needed this Ooh. extra turn for the wedding announcement to trigger so that his creatures get bigger and can actually tussle. Right. Ooh, there's but, a I mean, land finally. Sure, that was a big attack from Reed, but now Piotr stabilized. Right? Yes. You have yes. a hole on the tutu here. You run out the Rafine. Your entire team is going to become tutus. So so Reed can't really chip away anymore. And Piotr's got the biggest threat in play. Yeah, the only good news from Reed's standpoint is that he gets to wipe out his hand with Go Blank, but he's got bigger problems on the battlefield here. Yeah, and the Go Blank's just going to take one card here. Mm hmm. Unless Piotr chooses to. attack with two creatures this turn to draw a card off the wedding announcement. That's which is right. kind of what Reed's hoping for. Yeah, that's what's happening. Wait, so... so huh. He's not going to cast Rafine. Wow. So this will be an extra card in a hand here for Glagowski, and then Duke gets to take both of those out. So the oh, and she oh, take two and by both of those, I mean both of those. Wow! And there's corpse appraiser with treasures to cast it. Oh, this is are, a is great game. Is there a creature game. in the graveyard? That's my question. Oh, right? good question. Because we because got Go Yeah, so there's no creatures. Gone. Nambo here. The co Go Blank into corpse appraiser. So Reed's not going to be able to draw a card here. Wow, that's a beat with the corpse appraiser. And playing the Corpse Appraiser doesn't do much here. Denik is bigger. There's both Rafines going away. There's no window for that Appraiser to hit. He's just going to play it anyway, though. All right. We have a three mana 3-3. Three, three. Welcome to Standard. That does give him a double block for Denik, I suppose. Also, a 3-3 three, three does hold back the other two 2-2s. Two, two. So I, I guess I was wrong. That makes sense to cast it. It's just depressing. Yeah. You, 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 you want to think that Corpse Appraiser just reads three mana, three, three, draw a card. Uh, but there are going to be plenty of instances where that doesn't happen, uh, especially if you're boarding into, uh, into go blanks. Yeah. 
So Piotr at least has an easy attack here with the 2-2. Two -two. Um, and he could also attack here with a 4-4 Hive of Die Tyrant. It would force a double block from Reed if he wants to get it off the battlefield. Yeah, and that would clear the way for Denik in the future. And Denik with lifelinks nice too. Sure. This is uh, something that newer players will struggle with is recognizing when they've taken control of a game and Piotr just has. Now, it's not by a lot, right? There's right. there's many draws that Reed could have to get him right back in it, but you have to capitalize on the advantage while you have it, and, that, and that's what Glukowski is doing right now. Yeah. So Reed could make a copy of the Corpse Appraiser and then maybe just chump block the Denik or choose to double block Hive of the Eye Tyrant but then he's not going to have anything to copy. Going to have to lean heavily on that one blood token that he has in play if he doesn't yeah. find something relevant here. Yeah, the treasures help too. Like he can, he has enough mana to draw something, even loot it away or cycle it away and then find something new. I mean, he's looking for like Evelyn here would be amazing. I'm actually curious. Uh, I would love to ask Piotr, um, on that decision to keep the Denik, I'm sure there were a lot of different reasons. Uh, to, but, to play the Denik rather than Rafine? Yeah. And uh, I wonder if if some some part of that was, hey, I don't want you to play Corpse Appraiser. Right? Because oh. if you play if you play Rafine and attack with your creatures and you start discarding creatures, all of a sudden that gives Reed the potential of going Corpse Appraiser into copy potentially and just draw a ton of cards that way. Interesting. It could also just be a, a race situation, or maybe he just believes that the Denik is a is a better card in this situation. Well, here we go. He's going to double block on the Denik, and remember, Denik has Disturb as well. Yeah, and the the scary card here is Reflection of Kiki Jiki, so I imagine that's the one. No. You know, I'm thinking of cards like the Bloodthirsty Adversary, that off the top. and Absolute. Another appraiser? But it's it terrifying. Looks like, it looks like Pewter is just... The fact that a 3-3 three, three is just so good in, on this board, against what Pewter's board is, yes. maybe just wants to close the door. Oh, here. man. He's got to keep... I mean, this is risky, right? Because Reed has a draw step plus a blood token. And if he finds something sweet to reflect... It could really backfire here on Piotr, but yes, he is applying maximum pressure. What does Reed find? A corpse appraiser off the top of the library, Jeez. and now there's stuff in the graveyard for it, plus the reflection. This is just disaster, and even gets oh the nice here from Bogovsky. This was a risk he took. Right? I mean, he killed the corpse appraiser, right? If he killed right? the reflection, I mean, corpse appraiser off the top is still just a tremendous draw here. But this could just be GG. Like, yeah. Reed might just straight up run away with this game now. Oh, my goodness. What a rip for Duke. Remember, I mean, if you killed the reflection of Kiki Jiki, there's no targets here, right, for the Corpse Appraiser? What did he lose? Oh, excuse no. me. No, there's the there's the Denik. Denik, the Denik. would be in the yeah. yard. Den Denik and, would be in the yard. Yeah, and that's that's also, by the way, another reason that the Corpse Appraiser is so amazing here is that it's all it just ate Denik from the graveyard too. I mean, right? What wow. a draw here from Reed. What a perfect draw for Duke. He incidentally, uh, he and all he can there. find is a hive. He he put. Oh, he he got rid Kaito. of Kaito. He put Kaito in the graveyard so he must have a, a broad broad strokes game plan here around these hives getting in and reed's just going to pass the turn here with his reflection and the corpse appraiser yeah the the thing that reed just really needs to find an answer for is that unblockable tutu right that's kind of the onboard clock that piotr has five turn clock Mm-hmm. Looks like on his own end step, he's going to make the Corpse Appraiser here. He's going for the defensive Corpse Appraiser. Oh, there's Obscura Interceptor, but boy, did it come a little late. Soul Transfer, though, in hand for Duke. Maybe a target for that Interceptor. And keep in mind, Reflection of Kiki-Jiki is an enchantment creature. 
So that soul transfer, you can cast it for both modes. Absolutely. You've got an artifact, you've got an enchantment in play, so you can get something back from your yard if you have something and kill something that's in play. Yeah, Glagowski may have just cut off that line though with this Hive of the Eye Tyrant attack. He did just eat the other appraiser. And he's actually gonna put another one in the graveyard here though. He had the choice to, to put the token in instead, but didn't. Yeah, and, and now, I mean, this soul transfer is going to be That's very a big strong. Difference. You're gonna kill the unblockable creature, get back the corpse appraiser from your graveyard. Piotr's tapped out, can't play this interceptor. I, I mean, I wonder if Piotr was supposed to leave the other appraiser. You can't do that though, right? No, I don't think so. Yeah, he just didn't have a good option there. So another big swingy effect here for Duke as he God. takes out the 2-2 unblockable ninja and gets back his corpse appraiser. Now, I assume there's no more targets for the thing at least. That's that's the only good news here for Bogowski. Maybe I missed one. Let's find out. No, there isn't. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but I mean, Still, what a back a three, and forth three. game. And, and remember... That, w that one previous turn where Reed chose to keep the Hive of the Eye Tyrant, Ooh. really recognizing that that's going to be one of his main, main avenues here. Um, very close look, to double activating here. Look at this. Skyclave Apparition off the top for Glagowski. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he could take out the Appraiser and start bashing. <laughs> you could. Wouldn't be able to attack this turn as Reed could copy the Corpse Appraiser. Right. So probably he, just he's wants finally to okay. gonna All right, take he's the like, less you know what? aggressive line. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's get this reflection off the battlefield here. This yeah. thing is doing a little too much work. He, he had a chance to do that earlier and passed on it, and he's not going to do that again. So that thing is going to get out of here. There's a ray of oh. enfeeblement. That could create a nice little blowout situation potentially, though I do wonder if Reed just wants to get rid of it. Like, how important is that ray? of enfeeblement to him here. I think it's very good, given that there's that Skyclave Apparition in play. He can get a 3-3 back out of the deal. Right. He's going to main phase it here. Huh, okay. Probably playing around Interceptor. Yeah, I, I was wondering if he was going to maybe consider um, attacking with the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Um, and then when, when, when blockers are determined, you can use the Rave Enfeeblement, but wants to just get it off the battlefield first. Yep. So he's going to trade off. it more damage. That's right. There's another Denik. Somehow Glagowski is still on four lands here. You can see Reed has seven lands plus two treasures. And wow, another Jeez. corpse appraiser. I'll tell you what, the value of corpses is rising very quickly here in Reed Duke <laughs> land because the appraisers have a lot of work to do, and it looks like Lugovsky's just going to allow it to happen because Reed could just recast it anyway. Oh, and a bloodthirsty adversary here, too. That one's a little bit better of a target, perhaps, for the Interceptor. Absolutely. Now, it only costs two mana to cast. That's right. But if, but if it... But if Piotr does choose to use the Interceptor, Reed will be one mana short of actually being able to cast it yes. and play a spell from the graveyard. Interestingly, Reed may choose to just recast it and attack. He is applying a decent amount of pressure here. And we've seen that Reed has been... You can tell that every turn he's like, how much damage can I get in? Like, he doesn't want this game to drag out. So yeah. this part's easy. Just put Bloodthirsty Adversary on the stack, and, and then that's going to draw out the Interceptor. Yeah, you, you, you have to just go, go for the Interceptor here. And uh, This is a big connive. It's tough, though, because now you know Reed has a Bloodthirsty Interceptor, and you, have, you can't do anything about it next turn. Interestingly, the Obscura Interceptor is going to discard Denik, which could give a little more action here to Gogowski next turn as he can disturb that out of his yard if he doesn't find anything better is this better he doesn't have double black oh oh he does i guess yeah so the meat hook massacre you can clear the board but i don't know if that's i don't know if you want to clear the board and then have your <laughs> opponent on two hive of the eye tyrant plus the adversary yeah that does seem rough although one one thing i want to point out though is the fact that denik if it was in play it's static ability. Cards and graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities. Mm -hmm. 
Wouldn't that counter the bloodthirsty adversary? Yes. But he looted it away. Yes. I think he wanted something to do this turn. Oh, was that the only other card in his hand? Well, he, he connived, so he, he could have discarded yeah, yeah, what yeah, yeah. he drew with it if he wanted. Right, right, absolutely, yeah. Hmm. So so that's that's really interesting, because now you're going to see this Bloodthirsty Adversary do what? You can cast two spells out of your graveyard here. That's rough. I mean, it depends on what they are, right? Like, it, I mean, it's removal spells, go blank. Obscura Interceptor is going to attack here, perhaps a little bit of a hint as to what's to come as Reed goes, wait, I get to trade? He's really forced to do so. Yeah, but, but now you get to investigate. Boom. What a back and forth match though. Jeez. This is, the, you know, I'll tell you, most players identify like, oh, I'm an aggro player, I'm a control player. If you're a mid-range grind player, you are loving life right now because this <laughs> has been like a ping pong match just back and forth. Who's in the lead? Kind of depends on whose turn it is. And there it is, the Bloodthirsty Adversary hits go. the battlefield with double triggers available. That'll also make it, by the way, a 4-4. Four, four. Four, four. Two turn clock. So what can he find? So it looks like Ray. Okay. Ray for kill. Denik and then a soul transfer. Oh, that's brutal. Now is oh, there a my. there's it's no enchantment just in Just getting play. a card back. Okay, he's yeah. gonna get back Bloodthirsty Adversary here to just <laughs> do it all again next turn. But just as importantly here, this is a major attack because this is half of Piotr's life totals if he doesn't block. And there's still the double hive of the eye tyrant hiding in the lands there for Reed Duke. And those are very difficult to interact with. Meat Herc Massacre is not going to wow. do anything against those. So Denik is, that's a 3-4 lifelinker, which is pretty good on this board mm -hmm. against the Appraiser. It prevents the adversary from casting a bunch of spells. But again, like you mentioned, Reed Duke can just play out a really large adversary if he wants. Or can just sit on it and wait till he finds a removal spell for the Denik. So not the worst draw. For Glagowski. I don't think he has any other play other than run out the Denik here. Looks like he came to the same conclusion. Perhaps considering just casting Meat Hook Massacre as an enchantment, you know, yeah. straight Static up. Meat Hook. Right, but he decided not to. A land off the top for Duke. He's seen about enough of those, but he's still sitting on that blood token. Yeah, could choose to filter it away now. He would have to uh, use one treasure to get the double trigger on the adversary, but so what? The question, you know, is it, could he find something that would be more impactful, significantly more impactful than the Bloodthirsty Adversary. Something like a removal spell for Denik. Yeah, a Ray, uh, Infernal mm -hmm. Grasp. Because that could, that could get him ahead now. And he can always Bloodthirsty Adversary for the, the full amount after Evelyn. he doesn't find it. What does he find? Evelyn! Oh, Evelyn. <laughs> oh you called it, Paul! He's going to main phase this Evelyn, too. Just saying. Unbelievable. <laughs> you should have played in this tournament. You're just calling all your shots today. <laughs> well, I, I'm having trouble calling what these players are going to do, and they're much better than me, which makes me sad. But, but you do know the top of their library. But I know the top of the library, apparently. He found Rafine off of Piotr's library, which Jeez. is going to be just a beating here. And Piotr does not have enough mana here to meat hook away the Evelyn. And given that Pewter's stuck only on five lands, it, it looks like Reed is just making sure he has access to make this appear just as a hard counter. You know, this mana situation for Klugowski has really just 
been a thorn in his side. I mean, he's still only on five. And we're way deep into this game now. Yeah, I mean, Reed has just done an excellent job of just kind of whittling away Piotr's resources. Those go blanks did a lot of work, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you look back at that play many, many turns ago where Reed didn't have a land to play, was choosing what to discard with his Fable of the Mirror Breaker, recognizing that the games are going to go long, and it's all about if every single card is extremely important to match up, right. recognizing that and holding on to both of the go blanks. And, you know, at, at, what we're watching here is just players top taking haymaker after haymaker. So that one, so those extra cards that Peter had to discard likely made the difference here. That's right. I mean, they were two Rafines, right? Like those yeah. could have been absolutely critical. Divine Smite, kind of funny. It is an answer for Rafine. <laughs> it's just he's going to have to answer his own Rafine at some point. Well, it looks like wow. that point came up right on us now. Not enough left in the tank there for Piotr Glugowski, and he's going to scoop him up. Reed Duke, the mid-range master himself, 